Hi friends, recently I showed a simple but quite interesting design of the lamp, the printed circuit board of which we copied from Chinese manufacturers. The people were very pleased with the fact that I in detail told about the principle of the circuit. It was appreciated especially by beginners, and I decided to open a whole playlist which will be called Copied from the Chinese Manufacturers. All videos that come out with this name will contain not only the process of assembling interesting and fascinating circuits, but also a detailed description of the principle of their operation. Support this video with your thumb up, share with friends in social networks, and I will try to make this kind of videos as often as possible. Well, today I will show you a very exciting electronic toy. Links to the kits for self-assembly of this device can be found in the description. You can send your board design to the factory and as a result get beautiful industrial printed circuit boards. The GLCPCB factory is one of the leaders in the production of industrial printed circuit boards with many years of experience. Orders of PCBs start at the lowest prices from $2 for 10 pieces. For regular customers there will be special offers. Get the first batch of boards with free shipping in the shortest time. GLCPCB will produce for you printed circuit boards of any complexity of sizes and shapes. A link to the site can be found in the description. This is an electronic dice game. If you push the button, then drops out one of the six digits. Yes, at first glance looking nothing special. Why bother if you can take the usual dice? But don't rush to conclusions. The game is fascinating because after pressing the button, the final result isn't displayed immediately, but with some delay. But yet, you don't need to regard this video as propaganda of gambling. It's just an exciting toy that you can assemble with your child, enjoy the result, and play with your family just for fun. Now let's go to the subject. The circuit doesn't include any microcontrollers and hard-to-reach components. Initially, I tried to copy the board from Chinese sites as I did in the first video, but all the photos from the different vendor sites were photographed either extremely poorly or at an angle which makes copying almost impossible. Having spent a lot of time on hopeless attempts, eventually I found the circuit of this toy and developed my own PCB from the zero. By the way, it also took a lot of time because of the features of the circuit. Well, you just need to download the board along with the general archive via link in the description. So we have 7 LEDs, the chip of NE555 timer and the chip CD4017, which is a decade counter with 10 decoded outputs. The game begins when you click on the button. Voltage comes to the base of the upper transistor and opens it. Through the open transistor, the frequency setting resistor of the timer is connected to the pulse and the timer is started. As a result, we have a sequence of rectangular signals at its output. At the initial time before the button is released, the capacitor C1 is charged. When you release the button, the capacitor will start discharging, but not immediately. For some time, the voltage on it is enough to open the transistor and the circuit continues to work. As the capacitor discharges, the transistor will smoothly close, hence the resistance of the open channel will increase. And since it is connected in series with the frequency setting resistors of the NE555 chip, the frequency of the output pulses of the timer will change. As soon as the voltage on the capacitor is below 0.7 volts, the transistor will close and the timer will stop producing a sequence of pulses at the output. Now let's go to the right part of the circuit. Here we have a CD4017 chip. It has a pair of inputs and 10 outputs. If to the input comes a positive signal, so-called logic 1, then on the first output instantly appears the logic 1. Moreover, the logic 1 at the output remains even if you remove the positive signal from the input. If again to send a positive signal to the counter input, the logic 1 will switch from the first to the second output and so on until the last output. In our case, only 5 outputs are involved. As soon as the logic 1 appears on the 6th output, the signal goes to the pin 15 and resets the counter to the initial state. Everything starts again. Timer NE555, generating a sequence of pulses, periodically sends a high and a low signal level to the input of the counter. 
The counter simply reads the number of these pulses and switches outputs exactly as many times as the number of pulses arrives at the input. The outputs of the chip CD4017 control low-power transistors, that is, if a logic 1 appears at the corresponding output, the transistor will open. LEDs are connected at the collector circuit of each transistor. Hence, if the transistor is open, it supplies power to the LEDs and they light up. At the initial time, the frequency of the output pulses of the chip is large, so our eyes cannot distinguish the LEDs switching that is, looking at a constant low. As the capacitor discharges, the flashes are already visible. This is just the principle of the circuit operation. In fact, the device isn't so simple and has certain logic of work. LED's installation in this order isn't accidental. There is also a cunning system of resistors that open certain transistors. Let's study the machine code of this toy and the LED switching algorithm. It's important to point out that, in theory, it's an honest random number generator from 1 to 6. The number will always be random, since it is formed as the discharge of the electrolytic capacitor, and in the circuit of the transistor there are resistors with very high resistance. Taking into account the leakage of the capacitor and the large resistance of the resistors, instability of the power source and other factors, the discharge time of the capacitor will always be different, hence the resulting number will also always be different, so about the algorithm of operation. Pay attention to the upper transistor. It is of different conductivity and is opened if a negative signal is applied to its base. Therefore, it will be in the open state more than others, or more precisely in four cases out of five probable ones. You will ask why five if possible combinations are six. For this, a tricky switching system with resistors is responsible. Now, I will explain everything. Firstly, I will point out that the numbering of outputs and pins are different. For example, the first pin of the chip is actually its fifth output and so on. That is, the count begins with the zero output Q0. This is the third pin of the chip. But I will explain one by one starting from the top of the first output of the chip. Let's say that the timer stopped at pin 1. We have logic 1 on pin 1, and 0 on all the others. This logic 1 will go to the base of the transistor T2. As a consequence, the LED D1 lights up. The toy shows 1. The appearance of logic 1 on the third pins opens the transistor T2 and T4. I remind that upper transistor T3 will also be open, as negative voltage is applied to its base. Therefore, the LEDs D2, D4, D1, D6 and D7 will light up and 5 will drop out at our electronic dies. When the logic 1 appears on pin 4, the transistor T2 and T3 will open. The corresponding LEDs will work and 3 will drop out. When the logic 1 appears on the next output, the transistors T4 and T3 will open and we get 4. If the logic 1 on pin 10, transistors T5, T4 and T3 are open, we get 6. The digit 2 is formed in the event that the logic 1 appears on pin 2, but this output isn't connected, hence all the transistors except T3 will be closed. I will add that at the power line of the circuit, a low power rectifying diode is installed in the forward direction. If you accidentally mistake the polarity of the power supply connection, this diode simply doesn't open and the toy will not damage. That's the whole principle of operation. About the installation and used components. When assembling, pay attention to the presence of two jumpers on the board, as well as the correct installation of LEDs. Mount the LEDs and all the other components according to the inscriptions on the board. I strongly advise you to check all components before installation. I recommend a cool tester that can check most popular chips. Of course, it also checks transistors, linear diodes, octocouplers, diodes and much more. If you are interested, I have already shown a video about the functionality of this device in one of the past videos. A link to the video will be found in the description. There is also a link to the purchase of this device. And one more point. 
pay attention that the circuit includes two transistors of direct conductivity. LEDs can be any color, 3 to 5 mm. As a power source, it is convenient to use a standard 9V battery of the 6F22 format. During operation, the circuit consumes miserable current, so that such a battery will work for a long time. For quick replacement of micro circuits, I advise you to use the mounting panels. The circuit will work with a very wide range of nominal values of used components, up to 50%. The transistors used in the circuit can be replaced by others. Will work perfectly 2N5551 and 2N5401 and any other low power ones. Just before installation, pay attention to the pin layout. It may not be the same with those on the board. Button can be any low power without fixation. And finally, this video has come to an end. By the way, this is one of the most time consuming videos for the whole history of the channel. I hope you appreciate my efforts. All the necessary links, including to the components, as well as the ready made units, will be found in the description. Please don't forget subscribe to the official group of the channel and share this video with friends. On this I say goodbye until new meetings with you was Kaisan TV.